My name is Bobby Choi. I am 43 years old, born and raised in New York City. My parents both immigrated to the States in 1968. Uh, they actually met and married in New York. They didn't know each other before immigrating. I always have these stories about not knowing a lot of Koreans back then uh, in New York or just uh, in this strange new place and finding each other, it that's, that's, that's very interesting to me, so. I just remember um, uh, never feeling completely comfortable in my skin, like living in New York uh, as an Asian American. And I was just, I remember just feeling most comfortable when I went to church, because that's where we would always see other Asians. My mother was very religious and brought us to school and made us go to Sunday school. But for us kids, it was a place to meet other kids that looked like us and kind of had the same experience as us. There were a lot of kids that felt the same way that I did. And I think once you're, you know, grouped with people that are going through the same thing that you are, then you, there's a lot less explaining to do and you can just live your life kind of thing. It was just us being like, uh, feeling safe, I guess, especially for growing up in New York, like nobody felt safe. Uh, and I was always scared uh, if I was alone and I was always running places, even though I wasn't in a hurry. <laughs> but um, I remember on, on the weekends when we went to church, that's where I felt safest around other Koreans. And, uh, I think in school, I always felt like um, kind of a spectator. Like, I always kind of felt like I wasn't part of the bigger conversation of whatever was happening. It was almost like I felt like I was a guest uh, in, in these other people's, like, home. By the time I got to high school, um, I had moved around, like, 18 times. So it was a little bit different for me in that sense as well. So I, I felt weird at school, not only because I felt like an outsider or a spectator. It was also because I kind of gave up on making friends because I just thought I'd be moving, uh, I'd be moving again. So why make friends? And um, uh, that's why I actually picked up music and playing the guitar and, and writing um, poetry and songs and uh, music became a part of my life because that's something I could always take with me. All Asian Americans, like, applied to all those specialized high schools. It was a really big deal to get into Stuyvesant. My brother Eddie and I, we both got the same deal. If we got into Stuyvesant, we can, we don't have to move around anymore. For me, I, I was more interested in the arts and writing music and painting and, and drawing. So I had also applied to um, the performing arts high school. I remember when I went to college in Boston or near Boston, like in a small rural, like small little town northeast of Boston, in a town called Wenham, Massachusetts, and it was a Christian college. So I, I thought I would be safe there just because, you know, in the Bible it says treat others as you would yourself, or, you know, there, there are rules. You don't treat people with uh, unequally, right? But then I, I had even more problems there, like, like the, I was like the, one of the only Asian kids there. And I remember like finding acceptance and making fun of my race. Like if I would make like an Asian accent or something or make fun of the way we pronounce coffee, like kopi or, you know, like, like uh, other kids would be on the floor laughing. And I, I thought that was cool, you know, like I kind of gave them permission to laugh, you know. Now looking at it, back at it, it's like, just seems really silly, you know. I could have used that as a, a moment to teach, um, but you know, you're, you're young and you you don't have guidance, and um, perhaps maybe that's uh, my job now for my my son. You know, music. Like I started playing the guitar when I was uh, 11 or 12. I started writing songs at 14. I remember my mother like would sing hymns all the time and just a cappella or on her own and I just remember that being a part of my childhood and she was in the church choir so we'd always have to go to church early on weekends 
by the time I started playing guitar and realizing that I could create um, different chord progressions. And, you know, it started out like I learned how to play God is so good on the guitar. That was my first thing. It wasn't that I love that song, you know. It was literally the, the song the pa this pastor taught me how to play in a very easy way. And I thought it was just really cool that I could do that. Uh, and then the more and more chords I learned, I realized these are tools. Like these are like, I, I can change things up and make it my own, you know? And so once that kind of, I figured that out in my mind, I knew I had to stick with it because, you know, um, I had spent so much time alone looking at the wall, uh, the walls of our apartments. It was like really, really boring. Like back then, life was really boring as a kid. And then once the guitar came in in my life, I was like, it was it was just so cool because you could play forever and and not play the same thing, and that was really important to me. So, uh, and by the time I realized I could do that with words and put words to song, then I just I just got obsessed with it always been like itching to come out to Korea. For me, it was just vacation. It was just to, to check out a place I was, cur was curious about. But something happened when I was here. Like I was only gonna be here for like 10, 10 days or something like that, two weeks. And I um, discovered there's an indie scene here uh, for music. And so I extended my trip to, two, to a month I couldn't afford to be here, so I was like sleeping in jimjibangs and stuff. But it was like totally worth it because I was checking out all this new music. Uh, and it was like music like like I'd never heard, like uh, not the actual like sounds, but it was more like the the attitude. Like it felt like musicians doing things because they have no other choice. The other part of the story is I felt safe here. Like, and, and to this day, that's like the biggest reason why I stay. That safety um, is a big part of that, just that and music. So I've been here 10 years. Well, June 1st this year will be 10 years. Um, and it's probably the longest I've ever been anywhere. Like I lived in Los Angeles nine years before I moved to Korea. I'm just kind of, surprised that um, this my roots are growing kind of pretty strong here now. I remember I made the song exactly seven minutes and 22 seconds because um, there's a, a hidden track behind it called Stupid Head uh, that is a song I wrote for my brother Eddie. <laughs> so he, uh, he actually funded that album. Uh, you know we became best friends after he went to college and then you know, he knew that music was a big deal for me, but like making, becoming an artist or a musician was not an option for us, like especially someone my age, you know, because I, I didn't have any uh, one to look up to. I didn't have any Asian American uh, heroes or um, I didn't know of any Asian Americans that were like um, doing the kind of music that I, I was writing. So I automatically thought it was an al allowed. I didn't even pursue music until I was losing my mind. Like at 26, I was just working um, a day job. And um, it was my brother who said, you know, he'll, he'll fund an album if I do it. Because he knew I was writing songs all these years. And he's like, uh, he'll pay for everything. And I just thought, you know, after that song, I, I loved the way everything always came out, but I was like, how can I make it extra special? So I put a song named, <laughs> titled Stupid Head <laughs> at the very end. And I always loved that um, analogy of opening a do door for someone also means like giving someone an opportunity. I couldn't even come to Korea if someone didn't open a, open a door for me. And so for me, I want to continue to open doors for people if I can. And, you know, most, most of all, my, my son and, and any kids, God willing, I have, I want to make sure that they grow up in a world where people 
you know, lend each other a hand and, you know, you know, give each other opportunities. I mean, that's the only way you really get through life, right? My name is Bobby Choi, and this is my Korean-American story. Mm -hmm.